Welcome back to the second part of our lesson today where we are creating a new identity for Pomona Burger Co. In our first video, we created this pretty jazzy looking logo very quickly and easily using Adobe Spark. What we're going to be doing in this lesson is using the same program to update their current menu. So as you can see, their menu at the moment is pretty, pretty bland. It's just black and white with a fairly simple font. Um, using our new logo as a bit of inspiration, I'm sure we can make a much better looking menu using Adobe Spark. Before we do get started on making that new menu though, I just want to go through a few tips uh, that will help you out when you're creating your menu. So let's just jump over to this PowerPoint presentation I've put together of my top six menu design tips. Tip number one is to divide your menu up into logical sections. Now there's a few ways we can do this. One way is to group together similar items of food. So if you look at this example menu here, you can see all the soups and salads, they're grouped together in that section. All the sweets or the desserts, they're all grouped together in that section. I think you get the idea. So group together similar items of food. Another way that you can um, divide your menu up into logical sections is to order the menu in the exact order that people generally eat the food. So for example, the starters or the entrees will always come first. That's the first thing people eat. So that's the first thing we see on the menu. After that, we move into the bigger meals. So you've got your mains and your sides and whatnot. That's the second thing people usually eat at a restaurant. And coming in towards the end, we've got the sweets or the desserts because that's the final thing people generally eat at a restaurant. So it flows in a logical order. Okay, and the way we basically break up our page into logical sections is by using colors, boxes, and lines. And this menu here is used all three of those things. You can see the different colored subheadings break up each section well. There's these vertical lines breaking up the different columns, and there's even boxes around the page there as well, breaking up different sections. So I think this Pelican menu here is a fantastic example of how to divide your menu up into logical sections that make sense. Tip number two is to emphasize important information. And the way we do that is simply make our headings and our subheadings bigger and bolder than the body text. The body text is just the really small text, and that's just the um, items on the menu. Now, the reason that we uh, make these headings emphasized is so that when diners come in and read your menu, all they have to do is just glance at it. They don't have to sit there and read through every single item on the menu to find what they want. They just glance at it and know straight away, say they were looking for sweets or desserts, they know straight away this little section here will have what they're looking for. They won't have to read through absolutely everything trying to find what they want. Okay, so emphasize the important information on your page, which is usually your headings and your subheadings. Um, tip number three is to choose appropriate typography. So first of all, choose a font or a couple of fonts that are easy to read. You don't want to have customers spending heaps of time trying to interpret what's written on the menu. Okay, keep it easy for them. The other thing you need to consider with your typography is the tone that it sets for your business. Okay, you might have an informal kind of dining atmosphere where it's relaxed and laid back. And I think fonts like these ones here would look really good for those sort of restaurants. They're a little bit informal and you can see that this sort of restaurant would be laid back. When you compare it to a fine dining restaurant, where you'd probably expect to see a lot more fancy and classy fonts being used on their menu. Okay, so make sure you set a tone that will relate to your business. You don't want to send off the wrong message to your customers. Okay, you can also use um, fonts to break up different sections in your menu, as we spoke about before, but you can also see it in this example here. Uh, these bigger, bolder fonts being used for the headings, even a different color than the body text, which is a lot smaller and a skinnier font. Okay, so it's a good way to break up sections. Um, number four, pretty self-explanatory, avoid using dollar signs on your menu. Apparently people are more likely to spend extra money if you don't put dollar signs on your menu. I'm not sure why, it's got something to do with psychology. Okay, so just leave the dollar signs off. Tip number five is choose suitable colors. When we're talking about restaurants and food related businesses, generally warmer colors are the best ones to choose because they invoke hunger in people and it also reminds them um, of food. If you were to choose cooler colors like your blues and your greens and whatnot, 
those sorts of colours will remind people of mould and mouldy foods. So we definitely don't want to um, get that message across to the customers at all. Another thing you need to think about with your colours is use contrasting colours between the text and the background. We talked about this before, but think about it. Um, you want to make it easy for your customers to read. So look at this example. They've got a black background, so a really dark background. And on top of that, yellow and white text, so really light coloured text. They are complete opposite colours, which make the text easy to read. It's common sense really, so make sure you choose contrasting colours so that your text stands out from your background. And my final tip, tip number six, is to write a description of the items on your menu. As you can see in this example here, each of the different burgers, they've got a picture of each one, they've got the name of each one, and also a description of what goes into each burger. And that's what I'd like to see on your menu. The reason we include that description is basically to help customers make up their mind and make sure that they are making the right choice when they order their meal. Okay, so they are my six tips for menu design. Let's get over to Adobe Spark and start making our menus. So once you sign into Spark, you should end up on a home page looking something like this. All we need to do is get up to the top here to this um, search bar and we're going to search for the word menu. Now as with previous ones, there's heaps of different menus you can pick from. Remember these ones with the little yellow icon in the top right corner are premium menus and you have to actually pay money if you want to use them. So stay away from those menus. We're looking for the ones without those little yellow icons in the corner. Okay, I noticed this one here looked pretty nice, so I'm going to go with this one. So I'm going to click on it and press create. Now that'll just take 10 seconds or so to load up. So just give it a moment. And when it does, we're going to get straight into putting our logo and the name of the business into the menu first. So up the top, delete the current logo, delete the current heading, scrap them. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to think back to our first video about the icon we used. So let's go back here and insert an icon. Remember we searched for burgers. And you press enter. Oops. Still got my past search coming up, which was triangles. Okay, so here come all the different burgers. You need to try and find the exact burger that you chose last time. So if I go back to mine here, I had three little dots on top of mine. Oh, that's probably going to be a bit tricky to find. Oh, there it is, so let's roll with that. Now you want to use the same color that you used as well in the previous video. So make sure you go to your colors and pick the right color. I think mine was, what was this one here? Okay, so I'm just going to make that a bit smaller and move it to the top left hand corner of the page there. I might as well change the background while I'm here so we can see that a bit clearer. I'm going to stick with that purple color that I used in the um, first video. I might change these yellow boxes here to the next dark purple as well. Looks a bit like that. And now I can put in the name of our business. So let's add some text. Remember, you've got all the different templates there, but I'm just going to go with the same text that I used before. It was for Pomona. Did I have capitals? I did have capitals. So let's do it in capitals. Pomona Burger Co. All on one line this time. And the font that I'm looking for is the Jolly Lodger Regular. And I'm just going to stretch that out. So it fits nicely across the top. Now I had a pretty, well, fairly bright yellow color for that text. So let's go back to our colors and see if we can find that yellow. There it is. So that's a pretty good start. I think it might be a little bit big. I might try and nudge that size down a little bit. There we go. So looking good. Next thing we need to do is change the text down here to match what's on our menu over here. So it's basically a copy and paste job. I'm going to leave this font as it is. I think it's a good font, but I do want to change the color of it though. So you need to choose a color that's going to contrast well with the background. At the moment, this orangey kind of color is too dark. So we need to choose a lighter color. So let's have a look at these light colors over here. Um, what headings, I might go that orange. And for the body text, I might go the really light color. That way the headings just stand out a little bit more than the body text. Oops. OK, 
Okay, so hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing there. Okay, I won't spend too long doing that. I'll just do this side of the menu and I'll just pause the video while I do the other side. Um, so we used a light yellow, didn't we? That one. A little bit time consuming doing this, but you get the idea. Okay, so we want to get rid of this breakfast menu now. We want to start putting in our own stuff. So the classic 10.5 means the classic $10.50. That's going to go where this full breakfast heading is. So let's edit that, paste in the new one and click done. Underneath it, we've got our description here. Copy it, edit that, get rid of what's there and paste in your own. Click done. So you can see that's starting to come together. I'll do one more for you and then I'll pause the video while I finish this off. I'm just pressing Control C to copy and Control V to paste. So it's just a quick copy and paste job. A little bit of going backwards and forwards, but you get the idea, hopefully. So we're getting our burger names written in nicely. Once you've got your burgers in, you need to do the drinks over this side. So scrolling down, here's our drinks. We've got soft drinks, beers, wine, cider, and thick shakes. They'll just go in here. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video now and just finish this off. And that way, um, it'll give you a bit of time as well to do your own. All right, so I'm back now. I have finished off my menu. I did a bit of playing around the layout and adjusted colors slightly. So hopefully you get a bit of an idea on what I've done. But I think this looks pretty awesome. It's obviously a lot better than what they originally had. This basic menu is now looking something sick like this. All right. So to finish off with, what I would recommend that you do is make sure all the um, words are spelt correctly. Um, you've got all your alignments spot on. Nothing looks out of place. And then go to download up the top. Save it as a PNG file and click start download. Make it a solid color. And that will just download into your downloads folder. Make sure you move it into your flying folder and send your teacher a copy of your finished work. That is your logo and your menu.